Hi Pisces, E. Ray Taronic here, master weaver of mystery suspense thrillers and broadcaster of astrology. I am so happy. Um, this is the last video. I've been doing uploading videos since uh, before 6 a.m. and now it's about to be 10 p.m. <laughs> so I'm pretty ready to um, relax for the day. Um, Welcome to my channel, first of all. Please like the video and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. I definitely want to thank you for being here with me, for sharing your ears, your eyes, and your time. I know it's valuable, um, so I, I appreciate that. And in return, I'm giving you valuable content to help you navigate your life, to help you navigate your mind, your body, your soul, your wellness overall. Um, your career as well, because I have a, I have a lot of entrepreneurs on my page, so um, career is also a big focus for me because I know it's important to all of us. If you'd like to know more about e Ray Taronic, you can go down to the information below the video and um, my Amazon link is there, also my Instagram. If you go to the about section for my channel, all of my links, all of my social media links are there as well so that's how you can find me i suggest when you look at these videos you look at your sun sign your moon sign and your rising sign rising is also called your ascending sign i suggest you look at all of those as well as the planet or sign that rules your career sector okay i have to make sure i'm not mixing things up in this video by saying uh you know houses and sectors and 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 it, there's a difference, you know, between these things I'm saying. So I have to make sure as a new astrologer, I'm doing these right. So your career sector is ruled by Pisces. Oh, no, Pisces. I am talking to Pisces. Your career sector is ruled by Sagittarius. Okay. So you want to look at the Sagittarius video as well. If you don't know where these signs and, 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 and the planets are in your sign, you go to cafeastrology.com. You put in your time of birth, your date of birth, and your place of birth, and it'll give you that information for free. Um, just go there and put the information in. You can get that information off of your birth certificate. So with that being said, I believe I've uh, pretty much covered uh, the beginning. We can get into the uh, transits now, the major transits. This is Aquarius season. Let me cheer up a little bit for you because I am so exhausted <laughs> but you know i love this you know so i want to get it done so aquarius season is here from january 20th to february the 18th okay so the fixed air sign of aquarius is ruled by uranus my husband got on me earlier because i pronounce it uranus and he pointed that out to me so maybe that's not the smartest thing to do so i'm going to try and be more mindful and call it uranus Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, the planet of freedom, revolutionary visions, progress, originality, science, among other things. Aquarians are inquisitive and they have a knack for intellectual conversation, but they can also be aloof sometimes and unpredictable, you know, hence being ruled by Uranus, the planet of unpredictability. You know, that's what they call it. So you can expect some surprises this go round. You know, during that time of January 20th through February the 18th, you can expect some prizes, some surprises. Yeah, I'm sleepy. <laughs> um, some surprises. The first planet that we're going to go over is Uranus. Uranus is direct. It reigns, uh, Uranus in Taurus reigns over our values our money, our resources, because that's where it is right now, it's in Taurus. Those areas, those things are free to progress now, now that it's forward. And with it being in Taurus, it, it rules over, like I said, your, your values, your money, your resources. It's toggling between two and six degrees though, back and forth, it's, that's where it's staying until May. In May, it'll move beyond six degrees. So. Any planets you have in Taurus, you need to look to see 
you know, where where Taurus is in your natal chart and if it is anywhere between two and six degrees, because that's the houses that will be affected by that. That's the areas, I'm sorry, that will be affected by that transit. Now, with that being said, at the same time, it also is in opposition to Cancer, Capricorn, and Libra. So if you have Cancer, Capricorn, and Libra, wherever you have that in your chart, if it is between two and six degrees, that's where you'll be experiencing those big shifts, more so than the collective, because you're at that same aspect where it's toggling back and forth between, okay? So this month, the sun goes from Aquarius to Pisces, okay? So at first we're in Aquarius up until the 19th, which is, um, you know, a, a fixed air sign. Then it goes into Pisces, a water sign, a mutable water sign. Mutable? Yeah, yeah. You're mutable. Mutable. Um, so from one end of the, of the spectrum to another. Mercury, the planet of communication, skills, intellect, sales, um, a number of things Mercury goes over, but you just have to kind of narrow it down to what you want to focus on. It leaves uh, the sign of Capricorn to move into Aquarius on the uh, 31st, Friday. Um, Capricorn prompts us to be objective and free thinking, okay? After that, then it'll go into Pisces on the 3rd. February the 3rd. So in, basically in no time, it'll be there. Okay. So once it gets there, we're more dreamy. We're more uh, emotional. We're, you know, we're more fanciful when it's in Pisces. Okay. So when this retrograde happens, the retrograde in Pisces is at 12 degrees. It's from February 7th, roughly February 17th till March the 10th. It can stir up communications brought out by uh, insecurities. OK, so be honest with yourself, you know, try not to project your insecurities onto others and, and don't allow others to project their insecurities onto you. OK, it's not fair. So let's not do that. Now, you already know during the rec retrograde, um, the exits can come back in the picture. You know, they can come back sniffing around. Um, your current lover can be talking about the past going back to the past over and over and over, trying to rehash that same old thing. They can't help it. It's the Mercury retrograde. Communication, the planet is facing this way. It's the planet of communication. It's looking at past communication, past things that have happened before. So those are going to be revisited. Those are coming back up. Things need to be reworked. Things need to, to uh, you know, be retweaked. You know, contracts might need to get looked at and, and changed. So that's, that's the time for that, as opposed to signing new contracts during the retrograde. You don't want to do that. If you have to, you really need to read the fine, fine print and have those clauses in place to protect yourself. Because it's just not a good time when you don't have the ruler of communication going with you, you know, on the journey. He's showing up late, you know. Venus, the planet of love, pleasure, romance. It enters the fire sign, uh, cardinal fire sign of Aries at zero degrees on the 7th, February 7th. Um, it stays in Aries until March the 4th. So all that time, passions can be ignited in your relationship. You know, it can be a renewed sense of passion because Aries is, is fiery and competitive and passionate, okay, about what they do. But at the same time, we have a new moon on the 23rd that's going to be squaring Jupiter and Capricorn, okay? And with that new moon squaring Jupiter and Capricorn on the 23rd, you're going to have to look out for temporary changes in your relationships. You might break up and get right back together afterward, you know? I mean relationships across the board, though, because Venus deals with finances, too. So it might be a business dealing, some business dealings you have or some contracts that have to be reworked. Um, you, your relationship, relationships with your peers, relationships with your coworkers, relationships with your children and relatives. Just look for those uh, 
you know, shifts, you know, sometimes imbalances. Mars, the planet of challenges and energy, is in Sagittarius until February the 16th. So as a collective, Mars, Sagittarius is, is flavoring the Mars and it's giving us the gusto we need to get things done. And we're happy about it. You know, we want to get things done. We want to be raring to go, you know? So that's where it is until it goes uh, on the 16th and moves down into Capricorn or moves over into Capricorn. When it moves over into Capricorn, it stays there until the end of March. So that's it's boss, it's boss time. Capricorn is there to drive you home to make sure that you're doing the necessary things to make your aspirations and your dreams happen, to bring them closer to fruition. Okay? That's why Capricorn is there. And it's the after the retrograde ends, it's still there. You know, like, okay, come on. Now we've gotten over this. Boom. Let's get it. You know? So use that. Because you're trying to accomplish lofty goals at this time, and Capricorn is there to help you do that, okay? In any houses you have in fire signs, you have that boost from Mars. So look at your chart and find out where that is. Now, that being said, you can have all the energy you want, but I, I advise you having a strategy. Those with a plan and those with a strategy are well above the ones who are just going out uh, willy-nilly and just doing whatever, and they don't know what they're doing or why, why they're even doing it or what reasons they're doing it for. And then when you make mistakes, you have to come back and clean, clean up your mistakes. So you want to be as prepared as possible. You know, not your plans don't always work. I know having a strategy, you can't always do it like you want to do it because I plan to do these horoscopes all in just a couple of hours. Lo and behold, it's taken me beyond, well beyond 12 hours to get these videos done. So, you know, sometimes your plan doesn't work, but at least you're working your plan and you're continuing to move forward. You know, I, I got off, a little off base, but I can take care of that. You know, that's not a problem. So have your plan. You're hungry now. Your ambition is hungry. You're realizing your legacy. You know, it's you're, you're getting it in your mind's eye and um, stick with that. Just don't be ruthless while you're doing it. OK, we want to take on the positive aspects of Capricorn, not the negative aspects. So don't be ruthless and maintain your self-control. No seeking revenge. OK, just glow up. Be better, not bitter. I've been telling everybody that we've got enough of that out in this world. Please, there's enough. There's enough for everyone to eat. Now, Jupiter, the planet of luck and expansion, entered Capricorn on December 2nd in 2019, and it's gonna stay there until December 18th of 2020. This is a time when you can acquire wealth and material things, okay? You can acquire social status, you can build your name, okay? But did you put in the work? Have you been putting in the work? If you haven't, you can't expect those benefits. But if you have, they're coming for you. Reaping what you sow can be beneficial, provided you put in the work, okay? And I know you have Pisces. I know some Pisces that have really been putting in the work. Okay? So, that being said, on February 20th, Jupiter is sextile Neptune aspecting Pisces and Capricorn. So you have Neptune, the planet of dreams, illusions, inspirations, in there with Pisces, creates creative Pisces, deep emotional Pisces. You can really dream up some beautiful ideas right now. Your inspiration can be thriving uh, with this sextile, okay? And by the way, a sextile is when two planets are 60 degrees apart forming a harmonious angle or aspect, okay? So it's a good thing. That's why they named it sextile, <laughs> okay? So um, let your inspiration thrive. Create something beautiful that you can move forward with in March, when it's time to launch, okay? Saturn, the planet of responsibilities and restriction, we know it had been affecting parts of our chart for the last two years, but Jupiter's there now to create ease in those areas. If you don't know how it affects you, your sign, 
then you would need to go to either e -Ray Tyronic on Facebook, scroll up on that page, there's uh, less posts on it, and go to my December newsletter. Or you can go to my second video ever uploaded on YouTube, it's like 33 minutes long. When I go through the transits and get to Jupiter, I tell you how it affects every sign, okay? So you can do that um, to find out how it's going to be getting better, what areas are gonna be getting better, better. So now let's get into your astrology, Pisces, okay? We've been waiting all day. Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. I think next, uh, next month I'm going to look at all of the videos to see who actually watched, uh, which sign want, watched more videos and um, do that sign first. Although that would be kind of unfair because everybody's watching for sun, moon, rising and all over the place. So that wouldn't work. So let me rethink that. Maybe I'll wait till the retro right <laughs> and rehash it. Anyway, Pisces goes from February 19th until March the 20th, okay? So it's a month for you, Pisces, to seize new monetary opportunities. Put yourself out there, okay? People want to hear from you anyway, okay? Venus, the planet of romance and pleasure, is in your sign for the first week in February, ushering in an love and happiness, you know, even in your relationships, it's ushering in that love and happiness. Okay. Keep your focus during the retrograde though, the Mercury retrograde, when communication, skills, sales, uh, intellect, all that is, is looking back. Okay. It's in your first house of identity. It's in your first house of image, your first house of appearance. So here's looking at you, kid. Okay, so you want to uh, look out, look out for that. But but be confident though. You know, know that you know your stuff. <laughs> you know, be. I want to keep it PG on on the channel, so I don't want to curse. Know that you know what you're talking about. Okay, so be confident. Okay, you're granted visibility this month, so just keep up the status quo in your relationships and things like that. Communication from the past comes in to provide clarity into how you're going to move forward now. Um, the sun in Aquarius focuses on your shadow sector until it moves into your sign on February 19th. Okay, so things behind the scenes will be revisited. Okay, continue to work on projects while networking to make your aspirations realized, okay? You just gotta keep working. You just gotta keep working through it and keep yourself visible. Keep yourself out there networking, talking to people, using that Aquarian energy, channeling that Aquarian energy. That's all you have to do is go with the flow, Pisces. That's it, okay? You don't have to do any anything just extra, 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 besides just, you know, putting yourself out there. You know, so let them come, let people come to you. That new moon, it puts the spotlight on you on the 23rd anyway. So like I said, people will be coming to you for these opportunities. Okay. Now, um, I said it already. <laughs> Your new moon on the 23rd of February will bring in new opportunities. I reiterated that, reiterated that in the uh, newsletter. So I'm glad to see that because I was going, going, going without even looking. So <laughs> um, I just want to make sure that I am giving you accurate astrology. Okay. So please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. And thank you so much for spending time with me. Um, good luck, Pisces, and I'll see you next month. Bye.